I vividly remember sitting in my older brother's room as a child and looking at the TV absolutely mesmerized. It displayed futuristic energy tunnels, strange spider webs and dancing lotus flowers. And the most incredible thing, they actively reacted to his music. Unfortunately, these super cool visuals have gone pretty much out of fashion since then and in the new version of Windows Media Player, you won't even find them anymore. But today, I want to change that. Using the most cutting-edge free AI tools, I want to give these old pixelated visuals an AI makeover and show you how you can use them to create your own AI music videos. For the more advanced among you, I'm also going to show you how you can create your own completely customizable visuals from the ground up using After Effects and Stable Diffusion. But before we start, this video is sponsored by my lovely supporters on Patreon. If you like to be mentioned at the end of my videos and get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, project files and handy workflow sheets, including step-by-step -step instructions and additional tips and tricks, as well as access to our Discord community where I try to help everyone out wherever I can, check it out under the link in the description and thank you very much for making these videos possible. Okay, so here's the plan. I'll play a song in the old Windows Media Player, record my screen and use Stable Diffusion to turn this video into an abstract journey through latent space. The goal is to create an absolutely mesmerizing music video that actively responds to the music and would keep my 10 year old self glued to the screen. But let's start at the beginning. What is AI? Okay, maybe not that far at the beginning. For this video, I'm going to assume that you have basic knowledge about Stable Diffusion and the automatic 11.11 web UI. If you haven't, I've included some helpful links into the video description that will get you up to speed. For our effect, we're going to use an extension for the web UI called Deforum. Deforum is an AI video generation tool that offers a very wide variety of settings and it can be quite intimidating for beginners, but I'll quickly walk you through all the steps and I'll also share my settings file to get you started. But the first step is to find the right song. And in theory, any type of music will work, but music with a high contrast between the loud parts and the quiet parts, a high dynamic range, tends to work best because Windows Media Player uses the difference in volume to create the effect. So electronic music seems to work pretty well, anything with a strong beat really. But for other types of music, you can also use a free tool like vocalremover.org's Splitter AI to get the stems, so basically all the separate instruments in the music. And then for example, you can only use the drums or the bass to create a stronger effect in Windows Media Player. Now the fun part is to open this music in the old Windows Media Player legacy as this one has all the effects. Just right click, go to visualizations and search for the one that you like most. My favorite is Strawberry 8 because it has a strong reaction to the music and I think this was also my favorite as a child. So I'm excited to see what the AI will do with it. So now that I have my effect, I'm just starting at the beginning, going to full screen mode and record my screen using the free OBS Studio. So here's a quick rundown of the settings that I'm going to use. You can also download my settings text file that I put in the video description as a starting point. Download it and copy the path. Just paste it here into the web UI and click load all settings. And then you only have to go to init, go to video init and put the video of your Windows Media Player here. And then you can also go back to run and give your output folder a name. But let me quickly explain these settings. So on the first page I put the step to 20 because that's usually enough and it saves some time. I put the width to 1024 and the height to 576 to generate 16 by 9 videos. If you want to generate vertical videos, for example for TikTok, you can just switch these values and then rotate your Windows Media Player video. So the minus one down here will give us a new random starting seat every time we start the animation. And especially for prompt building, we absolutely do not want that because we want to be able to compare our results. So let's just put a random number in there. On the next page, I will put the cadence to one and change the CFG to a much higher value of 15, for example. And this means that the generated image will follow the prompt much more closely. If you want more creative results, you can lower the value to around five 
but in my experience the video will flicker a lot more then. You can also play around with the strength. A higher value makes the video much more coherent but also more boring and lower values create flickering videos. So that's why I usually leave it at 0.65. That works well for most cases. And then scroll down to motion and set it to one in the zoom window. Because this equation that's in there by default will produce a zoom, but we want our generated video to be driven solely by the Windows Media Player video. On the next page, set the seed to fixed so it will stay the same all the time. If you want more evolving shapes, if you want more organic shapes, for me, iter works pretty well as well because this will just add one to the seed every single frame or you can put it to a higher number of frames here if you want. It will have it evolve a bit slower. And these two really work well. Just try them out, see what works best for you. Next, let's go to the init tab and reduce the strength to zero. Now go to video init and enter your video path of the Windows Media Player video. And on the output tab, make sure that the frame rate is set to the same frame rate as that one of the video. So for me, it's 25. The form will also stitch together all the frames for you and create a video for you. And if you already want to add your soundtrack back in, you can just turn on init video under add soundtrack right here. Now it's time to think about the prompts. The forum offers the ability to change the prompts over time so we can actually try to tell a story. I recommend changing the prompts on a beat to create a really cool transition. So for that we need to figure out the frame numbers of all the areas where we want to change our prompt. And for example in DaVinci Resolve you can just import your video and right click the time code up here and change it to a source frame. And in After Effects you can control click the time code down here to change it to the frame number. And now just play the video and write down all the frame numbers for the prompt changes. Now think about the story that you want to tell and what style would suit it best. Anime, photorealistic or painterly? You can check out civitai.com to get a custom model for that particular style for an even more amazing result. Just download the model you want to use and put it here in your stable diffusion directory folder, reload it and select it from the model menu up here. I'm mostly using Rev Animated as it offers great temporal consistency compared to other models. So when you selected your model, go to the prompt page in the forum and add as many as you want. Just make sure that you use this exact format. For my test I had the idea of telling the story about a robot's dream of becoming human. But in reality I just wanted to try out a, a, a wide variety of prompts. The trick is to start very simple with very basic prompts, run them for a few dozen frames and see how they develop. And then steer them in the right direction by adding more keywords and adding the things you don't want to see to the negative part of the prompt. I for example used keywords like fractal noise and clouds because a Windows Media Player uses this type of procedural noise to generate the effect. And we don't want anything of that in our generated video. So putting fractal noise into the negative prompt really helped to separate the generated video from the original input video. For this example I also added a lot of painting keywords since that was the style that I was going for here. But you can make it any style you want. There are absolutely no limits for your imagination. Ugh. But maybe there should be. Now to convert the prompts and the video into AI visuals, my first idea was to use ControlNet. ControlNet is a neural network structure for controlling diffusion models by adding additional constraints. For example, the Canny model will try to find the edges in an image and Stable Diffusion will then use those edges as a guide for image generation. The result is definitely interesting, but it wasn't what I had in mind. I was hoping for something more dynamic and using Kenny alone created a fairly static image with the Kenny lines just moving across the image like abstract wires. It also takes a long time since ControlNet has to find the Kenny edges for every single frame before even generating something. Fortunately the forum offers another way to use the original image as a guide for image generation. Optical flow. It detects the movement of the scene by analyzing the pixels and their movement. And to use it I just went to the hybrid tab in the forum enabled generate input frames and optical flow. I chose raft as my flow method, but this medium seemed to work better on machines with less RAM. Now we don't even need to use ControlNet at all to get results like this, which saves us a lot of time. 
I was really pleased with these experiments, although I was hoping for something even more responsive to the music. But the problem isn't stable diffusion or the forum. Windows Media Player just wasn't as responsive to the music as I had hoped or remembered from being a 10 year old child. So I thought, why don't I just create my own music visualization tool where I can control every aspect myself. So you want to import your music into After Effects and create a new composition. Drag in your music and right click on it. Go to Keyframe Assistant, convert audio to keyframes. And now you have a null object with the amplitude values on sliders and now you can parent any effect to that that you want. Beautiful. Another audio visualization effect in After Effects is called Audio Waveform. Create a new solid and add the effect to it. Select your music under Audio Layer and play around with the settings until you find something that you like. You can also create a mask on this layer and use it to control the shape. I've created a lot of visualization tests and if you want to play around with them, you can get them on my Patreon. Here I created this endless tunnel and used the audio waveform effect to create these speed lines. I also combined these After Effects visuals with the Windows Media Player visualizations and got some really interesting results. However, the easiest way was to simply create a layer with some noise on it and parent the scale of it to the audio. Also, when I was nearly done making this video, there was this trend of people creating visually appealing AI images based on simple shapes like spirals and checkerboards. And the idea of an animated spiral that also actively reacts to the music was just too cool not to try. So I went back into After Effects, imported the isolated drum track of the song that I created using vocalremover.org and created keyframes from audio. I then followed this 30 second spiral animation tutorial on YouTube, which I'll link below. But now I want to have this spiral move in one direction and accelerate as the drums hit. And for that we're going to need to use an expression. An expression is a small piece of JavaScript code that we can use in After Effects to automate things. But I'm not the best at JavaScript. So I just described this problem to ChatGPT and pretty badly I must say, but it came up with this script. And I inserted it into the expression slot for the rotation of the spiral and it worked first try. I only multiplied some things here and there to make the effect stronger. Next, I downloaded the QR code monster model needed for this effect and added it to my control. Control net folder. In the forum I entered the path to my spiral video on the control net and init tab, set the preprocessor to none and selected the QR code monster as the model. And this is the final effect. I think I'll do a full in-depth tutorial on this technique because there are still so many possibilities that I want to explore. My original idea was to keep the prompts and styles the same for each test for better comparability, but I thought it would be more fun to show you a wide variety of possibilities for this technique. So the following is a pretty wild compilation of all the different tests, but driven by the same music. If you want to check out the individual results and their settings, check out my Twitter, my Patreon or Discord, where I will post some of these results. But now I hope I can mesmerize you the same way Windows Media Player was able to mesmerize me when I was 10 years old.
If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon. And as always, if you create a video using one of my workflows, please send me a link or tag me in your work. I always love to see what you come up with. See you next time.